doing today? Today we're doing a stencil die. Now we might do a little bit of a spin die around it if we have enough room. This is on one of my wife's discs. This is out of her bag. It's her favorite escape. And she is a Godzilla fanatic. So we're going to do Godzilla chasing some people. I just use contact paper instead of signed vinyl. I actually think it's a little bit easier to work with and cheaper. Alright. Just gonna lay it down over the disc and kind of feel where we need to cut it. It doesn't have to be exact. You just want to have enough contact paper or vinyl so that it's going to be able to wrap around the full disc. Actually, this one, usually I dip dye stencils, but today I'm actually going to uh, paint this on since I have my dye mixed with the acetone for the spin dyes. Let's see how that works. Should be a little quicker. Alright, I'm gonna fast forward through getting this vinyl on. Alright, what you wanna do is apply a little bit of pressure on the center of the disc as you're putting it down upside down on the contact paper so that you get good contact the center of the disc. Now what you're going to want to do is start from the middle and push out towards the edge. So that way you get rid of air bubbles that may form early. You're still going to have to do some smoothing out once you get the whole thing on anyway but this will at least help prevent some air bubbles. This is actually my old driver's license that I'm going to use to smooth this out. I'm thinking that with being that I'm painting it on and I'm not doing the dip dye, this might not have to be quite as perfect as I normally like to have it. been a while since I've done a stencil. I think I might not do the last guy over here so I have a little bit more room. this taped on. Seems to be a pretty good spot, I think. I try not to be too... Actually, you know what? I'm going to try to line it up so that it's at least lined up right with the stamp. It's this way. If it's not, oh well. But it'd be nice to have a little. Because even whenever you do whenever you do wipe off the stamps on these discs, you can still see 
little bit of a ghost stamp or a imprint where the where the hot stamper pressed down on the disc. There's a little bit of a embossment. I'm gonna get this tape down nice and solid because whenever you're cutting stuff out and, and as you're cutting things out it'll start to like loosen up a little bit and, and become a little more flimsy so you want to make sure that it's not going to move on you. Just got into dyeing, well I mean I did some dip dyes a few months back or whatever but I just got back into it trying to spin dye and stuff so I'm kind of experimenting on discs that are already in my bag or already in my wife's bag or whatever. And once I get good at it, then I'll feel more comfortable buying new discs to die. But let's get started on cutting this thing out. you're cutting this it helps to always pull away or uh, pull towards you with the knife as much as you can so it shouldn't be too bad. Spiky parts are a little hard on the back of Godzilla. And the people's heads might be a little misshapen, but we're not exactly going for dead perfect here. So I'm gonna use the blade just to get it peeled up. so you're not going to peel up any of the places that you want to stay down.
done this method before. And this green color doesn't really look very green. Mm -hmm. It's more like a blue kind of. But got to make Godzilla green, right? Like that's pretty good. I told my wife that if I was feeling fancy, I was going to try to do a little bit of black around the outside of the green. I don't know if that's a good idea, though. I'm going to leave that alone. Godzilla's just going to be green on his own, I think. It's gonna leave like brush strokes. You know what? We're gonna hit it just some straight acetone on the green. Just to blend it. So hopefully that'll eliminate brush strokes if there are any.
acetone starting to bring up the bad. Not perfect by any means, but wasn't really going for perfect. These are just discs that we're throwing in the woods, smacking off the trees and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going crazy over it. haven't even done a stencil in a long time, but told my wife a long time ago that I would do a Godzilla for her. That is not coming off. Also use this acetone to get the dye off of your fingers. You don't want to use a whole lot of it. You don't want to touch it a whole lot. But oh well, what are you gonna do? All right, I'm gonna shut you off. Get the turntable up here and do a little spin dye on the outside of this. See you guys in a minute. All right, now we're gonna hit Godzilla with a little bit, just a little hint of a spin dye. I'm gonna do a black stripe around the outside and then try to fade it down. Ruined. I need new brushes. I'm going to use this brush. I've never used it before, so I feel confident that it will. It will keep a sharp line.
getting a little bit of that fade effect that I've been looking for. It's just a little bit, but it's there. Just a black, thin black outline, just outside of the green, not touching the green, but just outside of the green, just to give it a little more flavor. Let it sit for 10 minutes. The other discs that I did the other day, I let them sit for like 48 hours. Somebody on Facebook told me that that is not a good idea. He told me to wait 10 minutes, wash it off with cold water and soap, uh, and then wash it off with hot water and soap. So we're gonna do that and uh, see how it goes. cold water and soap and the hot water and soap. Just using, just using Dawn dish soap. hot water going.
the dyes coming off on the paper towel. That's a good sign. is pretty successful. It's more green than it's looking in person. A little splotchy in the green, but ain't no thing. Little dudes running away from the big guy, but I did get a nice fade on that green, which gives me good hope for some more spin dyes I'm planning on doing. So, all right. Hope you liked the video. Hope it learned something. And uh, click like and subscribe. Thanks a lot.